In your morning headlines, an update on that 11 year old missing from the Houston area since late last week and also an update on former President Jimmy Carter. Plus another he Houston area since late last week and also an update on former President Jimmy Carter. Plus another hero cop saves a baby from a horrific crash and AI opening up another avenue of creativity. Hero cop saves a baby from a horrific crash and AI opening up another avenue of creativity that looks Real, the real David Sears is here with us. <laughs> it's not a hologram or AI version that looks real. The real David Sears is here with us. <laughs> it's not a hologram or AI version. Are of you David sure? Sears. Pretty sure. You look real. Pretty sure? <laughs> this AI thing, this new thing, this could open up a whole new thing. Are you David sure? <laughs> Pretty sure. You look real. Pretty sure? <laughs> This AI thing, this new thing, this could open up a whole new can of worms, and some are good, some maybe not so good. We'll have that for you in just a second. It's the real. The search for a can of worms, and some are good, some maybe not so good. We'll have that for you in just a second. It's the real. The search for an 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham continues today. Investigators now have a person in custody. He is the roommate of Audrey's father. 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham continues today. Investigators now have a person in custody. He is the roommate of Audrey's father. He has a long rap sheet that includes a conviction for enticing a minor back in 2008. Audrey lives with her father. He has a long rap sheet that includes a conviction for enticing a minor back in 2008. Audrey lives with her father. Her mother says Audrey was supposed to catch the school bus last Thursday morning about 7 o'clock in the morning. She never. Her mother says Audrey was supposed to catch the school bus last Thursday morning about 7 o'clock in the morning. She never got on the bus and hadn't been seen since. You're broken. You're, you're mad. You uh, got on the bus and hadn't been seen since. You're broken. You're, you're mad. You, uh, you're lost. You're empty. And right now, I, I'm empty. We are hopeful that we can bring. You're lost, you're empty, and right now I, I'm empty. We are hopeful that we can bring Audrey home alive, and that's what we are absolutely working for right now. But they Audrey home alive, and that's what we are absolutely working for right now. But based on the evidence that we've got, we understand that foul play is a factor as well. Yeah, investigators. Based on the evidence that we've got, we understand that foul play is a factor as well. Yeah, investigators referring to the fact that they found the girl's backpack near a dam along with other items, but they are not saying what those other items are referring to the fact that they found the girl's backpack near a dam along with other items, but they are not saying what those other items are. They are also looking for a blue Chevy Suburban. Former President Jimmy Carter hanging his are. They are also looking for a blue Chevy Suburban. Former President Jimmy Carter hanging in there. He's now been in hospice care for a year. His grandson was on CBS yesterday and said his spirit is strong, but then there he's now been in hospice care for a year. His grandson was on CBS yesterday and said his spirit is strong, but they don't have any expectations for his body that has been through a lot in his later years. Carter, 99 years old, the 39th president is the oldest living president in U.S. history. Just in the last few years, he's had survived brain cancer, liver cancer, brain surgery, among other health issues. And of course, his wife, Rosalind Carter, died in November of last year at the age of 96 before hospice care. He was in and out of the hospital. The family said in a statement how grateful they are for all the love they have received. All right, you are on board a police car in Florida. The cop getting passed by a motorcycle. You see the motorcycle right there. Now wait for it here in just a few seconds. You see an explosion. The guy on the motorcycle ran right in the back of a family in an SUV causing a huge crash. First Sergeant Dave Musgrave got there, got the what he thought was the only baby in the car out of the vehicle. Then he went back for the mom, telling her the baby was fine. But mom was screaming that she didn't see her other baby, the six month old Lola up under the dead man, still in her car seat. Musgrave started CPR while the mother obviously distraught and screaming. Is she alive? Is she alive? I lost my fiance uh, six months ago, and so um, what was right through my head was I can't lose anybody else. I just heard a breeze. You got Come on. He's our hero. He is. You know, we will never repay him for what he did because what he did for us was life changing. I'm a father. <laughs> I'm caring. I mean, we're all cops. We all care. So she's innocent. She didn't deserve this. Their incredible hero cop story. Baby Lola still fighting in the intensive care unit in a Florida hospital. All right, we are getting into those areas that sound really cool with AI. Now there is a new tool that can create videos. You're looking at Sora, that name of the new tool. The maker is the same company that brought you GPT Chat. 
basically you type in the video that you want to see and Sora will create a minute long video from your instructions. Here's an example. A young man in his 20s is sitting on a piece of a cloud in the sky reading a book. There it was. Or a litter of golden retriever puppies playing in the snow. Their heads pop out of the snow. Right off the bat, you know, with the good, oh, there's going to be some bad. It's making the whole process of deep faking easier. It's making so you don't need any technical skills to make a fake video that looks like almost anything you want. If you look carefully, they're often problems. But if it's a short little video, you might be able to fool somebody pretty easily. Yeah, you also have to ask, are there limits to the kind of videos you can make? Who is monitoring these videos for sorted ones? And you know some nasty things can happen and somebody is going to probably try it. There are also questions about copyright. Hollywood going to have to have a lot more things to worry about. The rights of artists and privacy. Remember, they went on strike and that was one of the big things with Hollywood. Mm -hmm. They were striking about is this new AI and all this new stuff that they got to worry about. Are you going to fake the actors? Are you going to fake? you know, some of the scenes with, with AI. So there's, that, there's a lot going on here. That was one of the key sticking points when it mm -hmm. seemed to go on for weeks and yeah. weeks. All right, so David. We'll see. All right, thank you, sir. All right. Yeah, that is incredible stuff there. I mean, real life-like and a little bit scary for sure. Very scary yeah. in a lot of ways. 907, 46 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at nine. Neighbors in a Northwest Barrett County community are concerned that a new park will only lead to more crime in their area. We'll tell you how Barrett County Sheriff Javier Salazar is responding to those concerns. Plus, spring break coming up fast, and if the weather's nice, that might mean pool time. We come back how one program is teaching young children to be safe in and around the water. This Best of Mutton Busted, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Susie, remember that one time you ate dirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, lots so of fun. remember the taste there. Good memories. <laughs> well, as spring break draws near, kids will probably find themselves in or near the water. One local program is providing children with the skills and knowledge that they need to stay safe. Yeah, very important. Tiffany Huertas shows us how the program is helping hundreds of kids here in San Antonio build confidence in the water. After a few days of learning about water safety, five-year-old Matias Casas and his classmates are ready to hit the pool. Ready, go! He has been so excited to have this experience. Yesenia Casas is also excited for her son Matias to learn from swimming instructors at Elmer Swim School Alamo Ranch. Once waivers are all checked in, we kind of line them up on the side. The students from Pre-K for SA are divided into different groups. And then their session begins. They do go underwater a few seconds. We want the kids to know what it feels like to be underwater in case of an emergency, how your body's gonna re feel and how it'll react. Ready? These Thank private you. lessons are made possible through a partnership with the nonprofit Miss Tristan Foundation. Well, Ms. Tristan Foundation, um, it was founded by Mr. Joe Bird back in 2016. Unfortunately, his two-year-old daughter passed away in a drowning accident in his backyard pool. In her honor, um, Mr. Joe Bird started the foundation. Water safety education is offered to all children enrolled at Pre-K for SA free of charge. The curriculum is about two weeks, one in the classroom and one here. We take care of everything that we need to as far as the insurance, transportation, uh, also along with that we have uh, we, we supply the curriculum kits for our children and then also a backpack with some different information in there and then they leave with a life vest. Since the program started in 2022 over 4,000 children have taken the swim lessons. Over a hundred children pass away from accidental d drowning and if we can do anything to save and stop that we want to do that. The program is now offered to about 2,000 pre-k for SA children for the fall and spring semesters across all four of the pre-k for SA centers. Drowning is preventable it's hundred percent preventable that's why we partner with these great um, locations and we try to give parents as many resources as we can. Yesenia encourages other parents to look into these swimming programs. There has to be some water safety. There's a lot of accidents that happened and um, kids do have to have knowledge 
of the importance of being in any any water. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a look at live cam right now. Things looking clear, but a little bit chilly out there. 47 degrees right now. And uh, guys, I remember when I was a swim instructor, going back to that story, I remember having to dunk the little ones in the water and it used to freak mm -hmm. the parents out. <laughs> yeah, that's how you have to do it, though. But you got to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's good. You know, you got to get them acclimated. Yes. <laughs> I've seen those videos and the little ones are pretty resilient. I they mean, are. Mm -hmm. They don't really know one way. They, they just yeah. kind of hold their breath no matter what. It's sure. just their natural instinct yeah. to do it. But they figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, one thing I can tell you guys, yesterday mm -hmm. was a beautiful day. I did yard work. I, there wasn't much to do, you but I found, some, I found something yeah. to do uh, just because it was so nice. Uh, but now I'm going to quiz you a little bit here okay. since it is President's Day. I know Steph would know the answer to this. But okay, phone's least. down. No, no help. I okay. feel like I'm at trivia night at a right. bar. Okay, phone's so, down. Yeah. Phone's down. Who is known as the father of weather observers? Obviously, all choices are all presidents here. Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, George Washington, or my man James Monroe. Ooh. I don't have an inkling on this one at all. Uh, you know what? Let's go D, James Monroe. Just because you said it's my man, Monroe. I okay. think it's hilarious that you added presidents other than Thomas Jefferson to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Having been yes. to Monticello, I mean, the guy was so innovative. You are correct, Mark. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. He was, uh, yes. He uh, took weather observations twice a day. He had 20 thermometers. Uh, he, he and James Madison actually used to just chat about the weather. They were big weather ah. fanatics. Uh, and he famously recorded the weather on July 4th, 1776, uh, which, by the way, was in the 70s, I think, that day. That was our next question. In Philadelphia, <laughs> if you were curious. Uh, just yeah. a little uh, bar trivia wow. for you. Next Very time nice. You, yeah, uh, I'm going to get the, that one right. The trivia time. at the bar, uh, <laughs> RJ, there you go. <laughs> Uh, the other trivia here, when's our average last freeze? A lot of people have been asking. We went over this a couple weeks ago, uh, but we did have a freeze this weekend. Is that the last one? Still can't say for sure uh, because we've had freezes as late as April 3rd. But our average last freeze is February 24th, so we're right there. It is possible it is our last one, but we just can't say uh, unequivocally that that's the case. Uh, now, as you get up into the hill country, the average last freeze is typically March, and we'll zoom in a little bit closer here. Northern Bear County, sometimes it's mid-March. It's late March up in the hill country, and then late February here in Bear County. So we're getting close. Uh, it is going to be a warm week. We know that for sure. 46 degrees outside. There is a little bit of a wind chill at the moment. That will quickly go away as temperatures warm above 50 degrees. And here's our forecast today. 55 at 11 o'clock, 60 noontime. Uh, 1 p.m., we're at 62. And we make our way up to 68 today, so another just perfect day. A uh, good day to take advantage and go to the rodeo if you haven't done that yet. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then 58 at 8 p.m., 55 at 9 o'clock. So it'll get cool again tonight, but not like the last couple <laughs> nights. Uh, we do have some fog in the forecast as we get into tomorrow morning, so I think the fog will work in from the south and the east in places like San Antonio, Pleasanton, Floresville, Nixon, Seguin. Uh, could see some of this fog early tomorrow uh, that may affect the commute and then as we get into Wednesday I think it's more widespread so tomorrow Wednesday and probably Thursday too we'll get started off with some fog and low visibility around the area uh, shouldn't last too too long and then we'll get into some heat uh, look at the highs next several days now today is not bad this is actually pretty average 68 but tomorrow 76 Wednesday 77 Thursday, we're all the way up to 82. Now, this is not record territory, and I'll point out that back in 1996, we got up to 100 on the 21st of February, just to give you some perspective. So we're not there, uh, but it is going to be plenty warm, above average. As we uh, go throughout the rest of the work week, you will not need a jacket. And, hey, we're 49 days away from our total solar eclipse on April 8th. We're going to be counting down every day. Uh, you may get tired of it, but we're excited, so we're just going to keep passing along the facts. Here's more facts for you, RJ, next time you're uh, doing the quiz. A solar eclipse only happens when there's a new moon. Uh, and there's several things that have to come into conjunction, obviously, to get a total solar eclipse. We are so lucky uh, to be having it uh, move right across parts of our area. We are very, very excited about it. We'll be doing a countdown every day, and uh, we'll be giving you a fact every day until we get there. Uh, it is just right around the corner. Again, April 8th, and it'll be happening right around 1.30 p.m. Here's the extended forecast. 76 tomorrow, 77 Wednesday. We talked about the fog. And then Thursday is our warm day, 82. Front does try to come through, but uh, it doesn't really cool us down. This is 
Uh, just a slight cool down on Friday down to 74. Weekend looks pretty good. We will get some more clouds, 75, 77, but there's nothing in the forecast that jumps off the page that says we're going to get any good rain anytime soon. So as wet as it was to start February and in January, we're hitting kind of a dry spell here. So it might be a good time, like you said, head out to the rodeo today. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of some of this nice weather that we're Do seeing. that wash car, too. It's a good oh, time for that. Yeah. See, you want to add chores to them. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to have a good time at the rodeo. <laughs> no had, more chores. I had to wash my truck last night. Uh, Later than I thought, uh, somebody <laughs> threw an egg at it. And I get a sat there all weekend. And okay. If you haven't realized it, uh, egg is one of the hardest things yeah, to is. get off mm -hmm. of almost any surface. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. 920, 48 degrees. Well, if you haven't interviewed for a job in a while and are thinking about getting back out there, you might notice the interview process is a little different these days. We're going to tell you what some companies are doing to make sure they hire the best candidates. 923 job interviews have changed over the years as the hiring process has evolved. They went from in person mm -hmm. sit downs to Zoom meetings and even now AI interviews. More AI interviews. Mm -hmm. But as ABC's Rena Roy explains, the latest trend doesn't have to do with how the interview takes place, it's what you're required to do outside the interview on your own time. Trying to land a new job can take a lot of time, and it's becoming even more of an undertaking for some. Glassdoor lead economist Daniel Zhao says more and more companies are now assigning homework to potential hires during the interview process. What we found is that mentions of take-home assignments or interview homework are up 121% uh, compared to pre-COVID when we look at Q4 2023. So a pretty dramatic increase in job seekers talking about take-home assignments as part of their interview processes. While sometimes the assignments are as simple as answering supplemental questions, Zhao says some require a lot more time and effort. They're asking people to prepare maybe a presentation that they will actually present when they come on site. Uh, or you might see that for a data scientist, they might be given a data set and asked to clean it and prepare an analysis. And those kinds of homework assignments can take many hours, if not longer. Zhao says these work sample tests are great for employers to figure out if a candidate is a good fit for the role, but often they end up putting a lot of pressure on candidates to do work that might not even get them the job at the end of the day. Uh, so one thing that we do hear is that candidates who have these take home assignments early in the process feel like it's a waste of time because it's a pretty low probability that they'll actually get the job, whereas candidates who get these assignments later in the process are more understanding of uh, the, the need for this kind of test. If you're assigned homework on your next job interview, Zhao says to decide whether you want to commit the time for that particular job. In the end, it can be a great way to show off your skills and make yourself stand out as a candidate. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. But RJ, what if you were never really good at homework in the first place? <laughs> true, true. Yes, um, uh, that's probably would fall in my category right there. <laughs> Not great with homework. I remember once I was asked to read a book uh -huh. after a job interview. Really? And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um, the book was titled The Greatest Salesman in the World. Okay. Yeah, it was. It had nothing to do with the job itself, but I was like, okay, let me do this. And then the other thing I was thinking about was the last job interview I had was here. Right. KSAT, 2010. I wouldn't even know how to how to go about this now. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole new world out there, that's for sure. Definitely. Well, if you're job seeking, best of luck to you. Yeah. 926, 49 degrees. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. That's right, including a recap of All Star Weekend. I think David Sears is getting ready to bust out his soapbox because uh, we had a high scoring affair, but is that good or not good? Plus, Wemby was also part of the action. We'll tell you all about it coming right up. And what Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar is saying to Northwest Side residents concerned about a new park that they think will only lead to more crime. We'll be right back. Tonight at 10. I do think it's a crisis. A local doctor is sounding the alarm. More people are losing their limbs in Bear County because of complications with diabetes. How one man saved his foot tonight on the night beat. Taking a look at live cam right now and the sun shining through the city of San Antonio right now as we tick up to close to 50 degrees. But as we've been saying, guys, it's been a chilly start to start your Monday morning. Yeah, it has, uh, but it's warming up quick and it's going to turn out to be another perfect day. Yesterday was nice. Today could be even nicer if you can imagine that. I want to show you a picture from the uh, rodeo. 
I don't know if this makes me laugh. That is amazing. Uh, I feel like, isn't there a movie called Men Who Stare at Goats? No, there's Kids Who Stare at Goats. Um, I, I, <laughs> that is like a great Queenie, shot, though. I think, I think that is, yeah. yeah. George Queen. Uh, it says, Innocent Wonder and Gentle Nature. A beautiful moment. I agree. Uh, we appreciate you sending that in. Very cute. And, uh, yeah, a lot going on over at Stock Show and Rodeo. If you can go out today, today's a great day for it. The weather will be perfect. Uh, and as we look at the pollen count, Mold is low, mulberry is low, ash is low, so no big deal there. We are starting to see some of those tree pollens, but they've, for the most part, uh, been in the low to moderate category. Nothing high, at least yet. Uh, and as we look across Texas and really the whole southern half of the country, there is very little going on. Uh, there are a couple showers and snow showers out in California, but most of Texas, all of Texas, is cloud free and beautiful. We'll be up around 68 degrees today. Some places will find their way into the 70s. Uh, but all in all, a real, really nice day. Some fog shows up next few days, and today also marks an anniversary of a very interesting weather event here in South Texas. We'll explain about that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Early voting begins tomorrow for the Texas primary. You can find sample ballots on ksat.com. We also have information about mail-in ballots and what to bring with you to vote. Early voting ends March 1st. The election day is March 5th. Well, plans for a new park in the Northwest Bear County area community here are putting some neighbors on edge. Crime is high all over the county and a new BCSO substation just opened out there. Some neighbors told our Avery Everett that they think the park will lead to even more crime. So we took those concerns to the sheriff. If you listen closely, you can hear the leaves rustling in this Northwest Bear County neighborhood. But if you listen even closer, the only sound coming this way is cars speeding down Tally Road. Things are growing and uh, uh, developing. Tensions are high on this side of town as neighbors discuss a proposed county park. For those against it, a big concern is crime. The county is short staffed as it is, and they're not going to have the manpower to protect the community that surrounds this park. Break-ins and burglaries seem to feel more common. Our neighborhood is plagued with car theft. On this side of town, there are so many open house and new development signs plastered around the neighborhood. And that's why the sheriff says it's so important that they opened up this substation. Even if it's just one room inside a fire station, he says it's all about connecting his department with a community that's quickly growing. We're absolutely going to need more. In the meantime, this is a pretty good bridge. It's been nearly a month since the Bear County Sheriff's Office opened its Northwest substation. These are our score deputies that are working the area right now. They're working on some information on, on a couple of the homeless encampments that they've identified in there. He says his deputies are focused on homelessness and crimes of opportunity right now. But responding to calls all comes down to resources. It's, it's certainly not that they're not being heard. It's do we have the resources to do it? The substation may be small. But the sheriff says it's a step. Now that we have this influx of, of 37 new patrol deputies hitting the streets here before too long, that's what's going to give us the ability to police more effectively. The county park is a growing debate in a growing community. We do not want the crime that is going to go along with having a walking trail. There's there's always going to be crime, but again, it's it's the community coming together. She's working out of here to identify some. And the, the sheriff says his priority is just keeping up with current safety concerns. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. All right, David is back with us to talk All-Star Weekend. And David... Uh, was it All-Star Weekend? It, it was. There oh. were All-Stars there. The game was not All-Star quality, though. Well, you know, Adam Silver, for one, the commissioner of the NBA, had been previously talking about how he wanted to see a more competitive game. Yes. And when he handed the trophy to the winners, he was almost he was he was almost disgusted. I, I think because he was a little you, disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Two hundred and eleven to whatever one eighty or something. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Well, what are we doing? Yeah. Even the players said, you know, some of the guys were saying, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play full out. Because it's an all-star game and guys are talking about getting, I mean, look at that. I mean, really? <laughs> uh, ni nice job. Missed a, missed a wide open one and it's slam yeah. dunk. I mean, this is what it's come to. And if, you know, I guess maybe some of the fans still enjoy it. Maybe the NBA thinks this is a great thing. But the commissioner was not happy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, uh, you know, some of the some of the fans were real thrilled about seeing this. I mean, you know, just yeah, I, put I it think, on live stream and call it a day. I think, obviously, you don't want to see any of these guys get hurt because this is an exhibition to begin with. But at the same time, David, I remember going back to kind of the 80s, 90s when uh -huh. we would have these high-scoring games. Uh -huh. But there 
there was a bit of competitiveness and a bit of intensity that always took place in the fourth yeah, quarter. It. it felt like that yeah. was the sort of unwritten rule is that when we had guys like Jordan, Barkley, Bird, David Robinson, those guys, they wanted to win the game, but they also wanted to do it in a competitive nature. So I feel like I'm that guy. You know, it's like back in the day we had this. But wow. This is just tough to watch. No, it, I mean, I mean it's, it's brutal. I mean, it's absolutely, like I said, why even do it? I guess unless you've got, you know, great ratings and everybody across America loved it. But when the when the commissioner of the NBA seems a little disgusted because they had talked about for weeks about how this is going to be a competitive game. They wanted it more competitive. Mm -hmm. They got to come up with something. I, I don't you know, maybe they go to flag football <laughs> <laughs> like the NFL's done. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it seems like all these all star games and all these leagues. They're, they're trying to tweak it, and they, they, don't, they don't make it any better. They don't improve it any. They may just change it around, and then they, some of them, like this, this is just this well, is a waste of time. What's, so uh, what's the alternative to make this game more meaningful on an annual basis? Because I know there was discussion about maybe having some sort of playoff implication. No, nah, not play it. Okay. I think, uh, well, I, I think if they were if, to maybe increase the money for the players on yeah. the winning team, I mean, I I get it. It's a drop in the bucket well, for these guys that are multi I was going to say, come on, guys who make I, a $45 million dollars a year are going to give another million? I say what? that they need more incentive. To, but I just think that the competitiveness from back in the day, we no longer see that because those were guys that really appreciated kind of just beating one another. And I mean, yeah. they kept the sportsmanship, but they also wanted to. They wanted to win. Another. Those guys actually wanted to go out and win this thing. If this is the effort you're going to give me, then forget it. Just take the week off. Go hang out in, you know, on the beach somewhere. You know, get your body ready for the for the yep. final run towards the playoffs. This is a waste of time. So in, being in named, my opinion. Uh, in, in, if you think about that, if it, being named an All Star, then would basically be on paper. It'd be just yeah. kind of a ceremonial yeah. recognition, yeah. which has kind of happened in the NFL now because obviously they don't have the actual tackle football game anymore. Right. So if yeah. you are still named uh, to the Pro Bowl, technically you're not really playing in the game itself. Mm, you're gotcha. just kind of had that. Yeah. So this, I mean, I, like I said, I, maybe there's maybe there's a lot of enough fans out there that that really enjoy this. This is, I mean. You know, I but David, I but okay, just, we did but, have <laughs> we did have a Wemby sighting over yeah. the weekend. So okay, I was you know I was glad to see Victor kind of take part. You know, these yeah. are guys that skills he's challenge. going to be competing against down the line, and he was part of the skills challenge. Also, the uh, Rising Stars game, as we see our our future all star there. Yeah, Jeremy Sohan and and. Uh, I don't know. What are they doing I mean, here? I, yeah, it's like, I don't, yeah. See, what is this? What, I, what is this? Uh, this was a skills challenge, and, David, and, and they... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be very, very <laughs> honest and very forthcoming. I did not watch a whole lot of this NBA <laughs> All-Star Weekend. I really didn't. It's okay, like, yes. I'm not wasting my time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, hey, you, you know. guys remember a former Spurs player named Jacques Vaughn? Yes. Yeah. He's the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. He just got fired. Well, wow. there you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So much for that All Star weekend. Not even wasting time. <laughs> they are a <laughs> Brooklyn, not even wasting time. Better than the Spurs, 21 and 33 on the season. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I think. Uh, I, so so like 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 I said, just give them the week off. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want to reward the All Stars by paying their plane ticket to some vacation spot, then okay. <laughs> but I, I don't I don't I don't get it. When the guys even admit. I'm not going to go out there and give a full effort. Mm -hmm. Then I think you've pretty much sealed your deal. I think I think uh, I think the fate is right. So uh, David Wemby's uh, team, as you saw oh, you there, did not win. Yeah. Did not yeah, win. No, but you know we did have a dunk contest also. Oh, this we did? is also part of the oh, games yeah. as well. Another another, is, another. Uh, four or eight. There you go, Texas Tech guy. Texas Max Tech McClung. guy. Okay. okay, so this is the second time that McClung has won the NBA slam dunk contest. And he's not even in the NBA. The guy has played four games in the yeah, NBA. Yeah. They had to bring him in last year to, you know, spice up the dunk contest, yeah. and he won it. So that means he had to come back this year. And I heard people just complaining like crazy about the way these judges were. I mean, the guy almost hit his head on the rim. The way these judges were, were scoring these dunks, and, you know, the guy who had the best dunk didn't even get the finals. I mean, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I think part doing? of the uh, part of the controversy was that they wanted Jalen Brown, who was an All Star in the Eastern Conference this year, to participate in the final two against. Well, he McClung, did the between the really legs, three sixty. I mean, you know, it's, kind of, it's yeah. like man, I, oh man. I don't remember Michael Jordan needing a setup on the ball. No, no. no Michael Jordan just took off from the free throw yeah. line and slammed it. Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, Julius Irving, Spud those Webb. Guys. Remember Spud Webb? Oh, I mean, yeah. The attention that guy yeah. got because what he's like five six, five seven, and he was dunking and. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, what, the uh, guy from Boston, uh, Brown? I mean, for Bob, I mean, that's when it was fun. D. Brown, with Michael, D. Brown, D. Brown right. when yeah, it was yeah. fun with, uh, and they did this, and Michael, I mean, you know, but now we get, we get that. You know, you got to have Shaq out there to grab a ball out of his, off his head and slam over. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw a highlight over the week. Brent Barry won the slam dunk contest that's, here. That's right. Yeah, and now he's a Spurs executive uh, right there. So, so yeah, also, uh, Damian Lillard did win the three-point contest, and we had that Steph versus Sabrina Ionescu three-point yeah. shootout as well. So, yeah, okay. all-star weekend. Here we go. <laughs> just just kill it. If you can't do any better than this, wow. just eliminate it. Got it. But, he's done with it. So, um, <laughs> by the way, Spurs have, what, like 27, 26 games mm-hmm. left? Mm-hmm. So, tomorrow... Let me tune in for this, Mark. Tomorrow, we're going to evaluate the Spurs. Okay. We're going to grade the Spurs. Card. Post All-Star grade. Well, let's put it this okay. way. They got some work to do if they're going to pass this year. Oh, yeah. We yeah, believe they, that. They, they, Thank uh, you, guys. They could be repeating the, the, the rookie season. Fair enough. 941, you're watching GMSA at 9. It is President's Day. So when we come back, more fun facts about some of our presidents, including some of their relatives alive today, and which president got pulled over for speeding in a horse-drawn carriage. For just about everybody but us, it's a three-day weekend. I'm glad to be hanging out with you guys here today. America is celebrating its 139th President's Day, but how much do we really know about the men who've held America's top job? From Abraham Lincoln's family tree stretching all the way to Hollywood to a chief executive who got a speeding ticket in a horse-drawn buggy. ABC's Danny New shares some fun facts about our presidents. Mr. Abraham Lincoln. If you want to learn about our forefathers this President's Day, we unfortunately don't have a time machine like Bill and Ted, but we do have a stronger internet connection to look up fun facts. My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. For example, did you know that President Abraham Lincoln is apparently distantly related to Tom Hanks? Yes. I don't get it. Well, what if I told you that before she got married, Lincoln's mother was named Nancy Hanks? But I'm still here. (laughs) Speaking of relatives, this man right here is named Harrison Ruffin Tyler, and he is the grandson of our 10th president, John Tyler. You see, President Tyler was 63 years old when Harrison's father was born, and then Harrison's father was 75 years old at his birth. Thus, we currently have a living grandson of a president who died before the Civil War was over. Do you have any idea how fast you were going? Well... Speaking of the Civil War, did you know that Union General and 18th U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant once got a speeding ticket on a horse-drawn carriage? Yeah, in 1872, he was reportedly pulled over for going too fast, got arrested, and ended up paying a $20 bond. A moment I wake up. It actually wasn't until President William McKinley, the namesake of McKinley High and Glee, that we would finally get a president who rode in an actual automobile. You'll have to excuse me, though. The hunt is afoot. And then Teddy Roosevelt was the first president to actually have a government-owned car at the White House. On the subject of the White House, it actually used to be referred to as the President's Palace or the Executive Mansion until President Roosevelt officially named it the White House in 1901. Danny New, ABC News, New York. What what jumped out at you guys about that story from Mr. New? All of it was interesting. Yeah. The, the the grandson. Not though. shocked by it. Tyler's <laughs> grandson still yeah. alive. That's wild. That was good. That was also, good. the horse and carriage, Ulysses mm-hmm. Grant. Yeah, yep. not shocked. He mm-hmm. uh, had an interesting history. And I thought I'd <laughs> heard sure. that before about Tom Hanks being related to Abe That's Lincoln. That's interesting. Yeah. Who knew? Uh, yeah. You know, I did a story a while back about San Antonio's connection to presidents, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of connections, actually. And Teddy Roosevelt, obviously, one of the bigger ones with the Rough Riders. Rough Riders. Yeah. They've all stayed at the Manger Hotel, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty cool. But, That's uh, great. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great if we could find that story sometime. Yeah, we need to pull. I need to look through the uh, archives to see if I can find it. But it's pretty interesting. Uh, there are plenty of connections. So anyway, uh, let's take a look back at 2017. You remember wow. this? Five tornadoes touched down around San Antonio. The uh, strongest one being uh, one that went through the Ridgeview neighborhood near, you can kind of see the stacks of the quarries there in the background. Uh, That's right off 281 there, but uh, right along Linda Drive, hardest hit, EF2 tornado winds were estimated at around 120 miles per hour. Uh, Pretty incredible and also interesting. We'll be looking back at this a little bit more because coming up uh, one of our Know My Neighborhood segments from the Ridgeview neighborhood, and we'll talk a little more about Uh, this incident, which was a busy night in February. Yes, it just goes to show you that in February, we can still see severe weather around here. 
not this go round though. We don't have anything out there at the moment. In fact, Texas is really quiet right now. We've got uh, almost a ridge starting to build in, and this is going to keep things quiet the next couple of days. Uh, a lot of the storm systems are moving to our north and away for, from us, at least for now. So as I said earlier, it looks like we're going to end February on kind of a dry note. As we go outside for you, we've got clear skies and uh, 46 degrees at the airport. 46 New Braunfels, 46 in Seguin, 49 in Kerrville. It's pretty uniform numbers here with southerly winds starting to pick up a little bit more, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. We should be up around 70 today, upper 60s. Uh, close to perfect as we've been saying here in South Texas it doesn't get much better than this 70 in Pleasanton 73 increase those brings in sunny skies for everybody. So what does humidity do next few days? It's very dry right now, which is why we're getting those good swings in temperature. But by the time we get into tomorrow, humidity starts to increase a little bit and then a little bit more by Wednesday before dry air pours in on Thursday. But whenever we start to see that increase in humidity, that's almost always uh, going to be a fog producer for us. So uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, I think we'll have some fog around the area and it could be thick from time to time. This is tomorrow morning. I think tomorrow it makes it to about I-35 and stops. Uh, so San Antonio and the southeastern counties get in on some of the fog. But on Wednesday, as thicker moisture comes in, most of the area will have the potential to see some fog and that could uh, affect our morning commutes Tuesday, Wednesday, and maybe even Thursday, too, before that uh, weak frontal boundary comes through. What about rain? Well, we're at 7.59 for the year. We're still above average, but as you probably know, it has now been a little bit since we've gotten some rain, and there is not much in the forecast. So that big surplus we built up in January and parts of February starting to uh, come down a little bit. Uh, it's just not in the cards over the next seven days. Hopefully beyond that, it does get active Again, 76 Tuesday, 77 Wednesday. Uh, we could see clouds stick around for a time on Wednesday. It'll still be warm, though. 82 Thursday, front comes through. If you want to call it that. It cools us down into the mid-70s on Friday, so this is um, not a strong front. Mid-70s Saturday and Sunday with a few more clouds. Uh, no freezing temperatures. It's uh, almost like a spring-like forecast, honestly, just looking at it, minus that chance for thunderstorms. And it looks like the cedar season is done. Kaput. Uh, but so a lot of people happy uh, about that. Oak uh -oh. season is right around. Uh -oh. Yes, it is. Yeah, we haven't seen uh -oh. it yet, but it'll be here soon. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 951, 50 degrees. Let's check out the zoo and a special deal on admission today, RJ. That's right. Uh, the zoo is offering $8 entry to all Bear County residents as we take a look at the lovely flamingos out there. And if I'm not mistaken, I know we're not looking at Timothy today, but he apparently is launching his campaign to become the HOTUS, the hippo of the United States of America on President's Day. <laughs> I'd vote for him. <laughs> Timothy for President's <laughs> We'll be right back. Last night was the People's Choice Awards. Adam Sandler and Lenny Kravitz were honored with Icon Award. There's Adam. Sandler took home the People's Icon Award for all of the comedy movies he's been in and for his more dramatic movies like Uncut Gems and Hustle. Yeah, he's got some acting chops in those. Uh, rock star Lenny Kravitz, you see right there, accepted the Music Icon Award, and in his speech he said that he was thankful that he did not listen to the advice given to him early in his career that was telling him to change in order to have a better chance at success. He then went on to perform some of his best hits like Fly Away and Go my way. More big winners included Rachel Ziegler for uh, action movie star Ice Spice. So you see there, best new artist. Barbie won the movie award and Grey's Anatomy, which took home the show award on last night's People's Choice. And we have made our way into the 50s. We'll be up near 70 today. Beautiful weather. Great weather next few days. Just some fog maybe in the mornings. Uh, warm even going into next weekend. RJ, thanks for filling in today, yeah, sir. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Stephanie should be back tomorrow, but it's been a great time. Sounds good. Have a great day.